Hello and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett and on this channel we cover all things Gen Chem related. On this video I'll be just discussing how intermolecular forces affect things like solubility. Let's get started. If you've been following along in this series of videos, we learned all about intermolecular forces and how to make some uh, predictions of what intermolecular forces would be present based on the type of molecule that we're dealing with. And so one of the reasons this is important is because this intermolecular forces really do dictate things like solubility. How likely is something to be dissolved in another substance? Well, how we determine that is based off of what we know as the chemist rule of thumb, which is like dissolves like. Things that have similar intermolecular forces will like to dissolve in each other. Things with completely different intermolecular forces don't want to be around each other. And this is really, really present when you think about your nonpolar molecules versus your polar molecules. Um, in polar substances, polar substances tend to have these regions in them, which are known as hydrophilic groups. Hydrophilic meaning they love water. They love being around water. Um, and so polar substances tend to have very similar intermolecular forces as water. And so you'll see where you'll have polar things being able to dissolve in other, other polar things. Now, nonpolar molecules, they have regions which are known as hydrophobic group. Hydrophobic meaning you fear water. So they don't wanna be around water. And so what you'll see is nonpolar molecules will blend with other nonpolar molecules, but you won't see this blending occurring between polar and nonpolar molecules. Now, occasionally you have some molecules that have regions of both, like you know, some a little bit of polar, but a lot of nonpolar, and you might have like slight solubility um, and you can impact um, that solubility by changing some other parameters. Um, but the general way we like to classify it is again, like dissolves like. Things with similar intermolecular forces will likely form homogeneous solutions. Now, if you've ever looked at oil and water, um, a lot of people, when they look at the separation that occurs between oil and water, they, they say, oh, it's the density. That's the reason why they're separated. Now, that's a reason. That's part of the reason. But the real driving force is these intermolecular forces. Water is, is a very polar substance. So you have the ability to have dispersion, dipole, dipole, and hydrogen bonding. Whereas oil is very nonpolar. So really only dispersion forces are present. And so you end up getting a separation similar to what you see here on this picture, where you have a, like a complete barrier between these polar and nonpolar regions um, wanting to mix, okay? So different polar solvents are out there. Of course, the universal polar solvent is water. And so we can dissolve a lot of different things in water. But there are also polar solvents like dichloromethane, which is also um, a polar substance because it has those dipole um, areas present. Um, or ethanol, which has the hydrogen bonding that's present in there. But we also have a lot of different nonpolar solvents. Um, a lot of times any hydrocarbon, so when you hear hydrocarbon, that's something that has just hydrogen and carbon in it. Those will tend to be nonpolar, um, but you could also have things like carbon tetrachloride that's also nonpolar based off of the symmetry that's present in that molecule. All right, so if we wanted to choose of the pairs, which would be more soluble in the water? Well, in this case, we're looking for those um, molecules that have similar intermolecular forces. Remember, like dissolves like. So in letter A, when we compare the one on the left and the one on the right, well, the one on the left we know can do hydrogen bonding, that's methanol. Um, so we would expect that that one should be more soluble in water. And then in letter B, we see we do have a hydrocarbon there, that CH, CH, all those CHs, versus CH3Cl, so a, a polar substance. So that polar substance would likely dissolve in our polar water better than the nonpolar material, okay? All right, so I hope this video helped you understand how intermolecular forces impact solubility and that you now feel comfortable declaring whether something will be soluble or insoluble in another substance. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Come back later. I'll be back with more videos. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.